Lord, I do thank you so much, Lord, for your love to us, Lord. And Father, it's such a privilege to be able to come and to share your word, Lord, to be able to bring, Lord, to your people, Lord Jesus, everything that's in your heart, Lord. And I pray, Lord, I, what you've put in my heart, Lord, that it would open our minds, our, our hearts today, Lord, and that we would feel, Lord, the presence of God, Lord, in our own lives, Lord. In your precious name, amen. I was talking to somebody during the week, and the Sunday school, sorry, I forgot Sunday school. Forgive me. I was talking to somebody during the week, and they were relating to me about they were going through a difficult time at present, and um, a very difficult time, actually. And this person then said to me, they said, Patrick, you know, if this was 11 years ago, I'd be out of my mind. But now I'm not, because I know God is with me. You know, what a testimony, really, you know, that that person could relate that, knowing, knowing, and I knowing what they were going through, and uh, to be able to say that, 11 years ago, I'd be out of my mind, and, but now... And there was complete peace. And yes, there was sadness and sorrow and upset, etc. But yet, in the midst of it all, there was this peace, this, this freedom from anxiety. And as the person related, it's because of God. I want to start this morning. The message this morning really is all about God with us. And it's relating to the invisible hand of God that we never see you know people tell us like God is with us the Lord is with you etc you're going through certain things and even for that that person to say to me like you know God is with me like you cannot see God you cannot see his hand and yet like if you stand in faith and we've heard this morning about it you know in one of the songs there that Ken sang like you know a wretch like me like you know he, he, he came for a wretch like me. And how true that is. And, you know, we, we, sometimes I believe, and I, I am as guilty of this as anybody else, we fail to grab hold of the fact that God is with us. The invisible hand of God is protecting you, guiding you, leading you, and were God to take his hand off of us, chaos would break out in our lives. Total chaos. Everything would go wrong. You might say, well, things are going wrong at the moment. Well, I want to guarantee you, if God hadn't his hand in your life, there would be a lot worse. You know, if you look, they came to the Red Sea, and everything was going through their minds. They were complaining. They were giving out. They were doing this. They were doing that. They wanted to go back. They wanted to do everything. And God left it there. He didn't remove it but he gave him a way through it. And that many things happen in our lives, you know, many things that we come up against, many problems, many things we have to deal with. And God never removes them, but he enables us by his grace to go through them. And I know many people here in the church have gone through so many things. Were I to go through them myself, I, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know where I'd be really, you know. They've gone through such, such horrible, horrible stuff in their lives. Such turmoil, such brokenness, such sadness, such being down in the dumps, being really down in, in the lowest of the lowest places. And yet, to speak to those people today, the one thing they will say, God is with me. God brought me through. The invisible hand of God brought them through. And what a testimony that is to the world today. You know, and William Coates said there about it, like, you know, the world is falling apart, and it is. And I was lying in bed this morning, you know, very early the Lord woke me up this morning. I was lying in bed, and I was just thinking that 
And I, I believe it was the Holy Spirit, you know. We all say the world has fallen apart. And I say it myself, and I, I've said it from here. And the world has fallen apart, and, and everything is worse than each other. And, you know, people are doing this, and mankind is destroying the world. And all of this is happening. And you know what came to me? There is still night, and there is still day. Just like God said there would be a creation. The sun shines, the rain falls, both on the just and the unjust. As the word says, there'll be spring and there'll be summer. There'll be autumn and there'll be winter, just as God planned it. What a wonderful God we have. You know, that he would even put that into my mind so early in the morning just to confirm to myself, and I believe this is an answer from God to me, that he is with me. And I want to encourage you today that the same God who created this marvelous world that created you is still with you and will be with you always to the end of times and beyond. There's a verse in, in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, and it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, that doesn't mean that the weapons won't be formed. It says no weapon that is formed against you so the weapon can be anything, anything that comes against you. Whatever it may be in your life, whatever you are facing, even at this very moment, whatever you are going through, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 4, 7, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. This is the rich that was... My brother Ken was talking about this morning, a wretch like me, earthen vessels, easily broken, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure, and the treasure that he's talking about is the treasure that he spoke about in verse 6, the knowledge of God, planted in each one of us, in other words, the gospel of Jesus. And as we go and share that gospel, wherever you may share it, with whomever you may share it, the power to do so comes from the invisible hand of God through the Holy Spirit in you, empowering you with his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Humans can't understand that. You cannot grab hold of that with worldly wisdom. You can only grab hold of it through the wisdom of God as he reveals to you through revelation of his word in his word. Right deep into your heart can you come to understand that within you is the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ, as it says in the previous verse. Hallelujah. Could we go to Deuteronomy, chapter 20? Now, I'll be going around in, a lots, of, in lots of places, just reading scripture here and there. But here in Deuteronomy, chapter 20, I want to read one verse. And this is the verse I want to read. It's, it's verse 1. 
And I'll tell you in a minute why. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 says, When you go out to battle against your enemies, and he's talking here to the Israelites, and see the horses and chariots and people more numerous than you. But this verse is also for us. When you go out to battle, and the problem seems bigger than you, God says, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord, your God, is with you. I want you to tell yourself right now, in whatever you're going through, whatever problem is going on in your life, whatever trouble you're going through, I want you to tell yourself right now, God is with me. God is with me. It doesn't matter what's coming against me. God is with me in the midst of all of this. And every day, I want you to repeat this verse. And I want you to tell yourself, when the enemy comes at you, God is with me. That's all you need to say. You needn't rebuke. You needn't do another thing. Just tell him, God is with me. That's all you need to say. God is with me. And he is the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Those are the principles governing warfare. In other words, those are the instructions of when you go into battle. They're the instructions from God's heart to his people when they go to battle. So no matter what problem it is, no matter how big it may seem, you tell it, God is with me. As they walked through the Red Sea, I'm sure they were chanting, God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. No matter what you come up against, you can collectively say it with your family. You can shout it out, God is with us. Or you can say it as an individual, God is with me. What can man do to me if God is with me? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Could we go please to Numbers chapter 13? Numbers chapter 13, and here again I'm going to read a couple of verses. I'll start with verse 1, just two verses. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. Okay? He says, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. Right? So this was God's promise to them. Send men, Moses, send them up to spy out the land so they will know what they're up against. But remember, Moses, I am giving it into their hand. Yes, they may have to fight battles in there, but the land is theirs. Has God ever spoken like that to you? I believe that he speaks to us on a continual basis in such a way. When we are up against things in our lives, I believe that God comes alongside us and he says to us, I am giving that to you because you've asked me. But I want you to go, there will be battles to fight. But you know from the word that it says, God is with me, so I don't have to fear the battles that I come up against. I don't have to fear them. My God will bring me through. Will he remove it? I don't know. But he'll give me the power and the grace to go through it. Because God is with me. Now let's see what happens. 
Let's go to verse 21. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehab, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai. The descendants of Anak were there. Then they came to the valley of Eshkol, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. Now, this was one cluster of grapes. Now, you all know when you go to the shop and you buy one cluster of grapes, you can pick it up and put it into your pocket or put it into a small bag, right? They cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between two of them on a pole. This was no ordinary bunch of grapes. This was something that it took two men to carry. This was how God was blessing them. This is what the, the invisible hand of God had prepared before time began. This land, this chosen land for his people. You know, when blessings come upon us, I hear many people say it's a coincidence. Or this happened, or that happened. It's not. It's a blessing from the hand of God. If you are a child of God, then you receive it as a blessing from God's hand. Prepared for you by the invisible hand of God. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs, the oranges in other words. The place was called the Valley of Eshkol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. The size of it, it was enormous. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron, and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at, at Kadesh. They brought back what to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said, they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people and before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. Verse 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of giant stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from giants, it says, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. They were telling the truth. They said, we are not able to go up against these. And that was the truth. Doing it man's way, of course. But with God, God had given them this land and yet here there was fear. Here there was fear. 
and it kept them. Your mind can play so many tricks with you, you know, when you are in fear. They looked at the opposition and they felt in themselves like grasshoppers. And it was as if the others had said to them, you look like grasshoppers too on our side. But they hadn't said anything. But they made up their mind. Their mind began to play tricks with them. And they made up their mind. That's what they are thinking about us also. That's what they are thinking about us. They are thinking we are grasshoppers as well and we have no power. I guarantee you they weren't. Because they knew that these were the people God had brought out of Egypt. They knew these were the people that had stood against the Canaanites, the Amalekites, and all the, the ites that came against them in the desert. They knew this was the people that God had brought through the desert, who had fed them and brought them. But it was the people themselves who forgot God. 1 Corinthians 2 9 tells us, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. In other words, whatever you've seen, whatever you've heard, even anything the most beautiful, anything that you could imagine, is nothing compared with what God has for you. Nothing compared what God, God has for you. The invisible hand of God has gone before us all. We read it in Revelation and we try and understand even from Revelation, even with the wisdom of God as we take that into our human minds and we try to grab hold of what God has really prepared for us. And we see the streets of gold and the, 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 the streets of so magnificent in our imagination, as we're trying to imagine what it must look like, this city that God has prepared for us. But no ear has heard, no eye has seen, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. There is nothing that we can ever imagine could be so beautiful of what God has prepared for us in all its magnificence. And every day he's leading us out and guiding us in a certain direction. If you go into chapter 3 of Exodus, and we won't read it for the sake of time, but you can read it yourself, and in that you will see Moses. Moses, you can start to chapter 2 and you can go in there and see that Moses was a man, who, and we all know the story of Moses, he was brought up in the palace of Pharaoh because his mother hid him in the basket in the Nile and then because all the babies were going to be destroyed and then the, uh, Pharaoh's daughter came along and she found the basket and then uh, um, Moses' sister said, I know somebody who will look after him for you, and that was her mother, of course, Moses' mother, and so it all turned out that Moses' mother came and lived in the palace and brought up Moses. And Moses lived in the palace, and he had a wonderful time. And D.L. Moody said about Moses, he said, Moses, he said, the first 40 years, he thought he was somebody. The next 40 years, he learned that he was nobody. And the third 40 years, he understood that God uses nobodies. Hallelujah. And that's the story of Moses. And Moses now, he sees two fellow, he sees an Egyptian uh, having a, a row, which I will say for the sake of paraphrasing, with, with uh, he, one of his people. And so he rushes out and he kills him. Do you ever do that? to have a rush into a situation without asking God about it. You go headlong into it without asking God's advice. And maybe sometimes you ask God's advice, you know, don't wait for the answer. You still do it yourself. So he messed up. And then he went out the following day, and there, there was two of his own guys arguing, and, and one of them said, you're going to kill us too. 
So realizing then that what he had done was found out, he ran away. And he was in the, the wilderness in, in the desert of Midian, and he was minding his father-in-law's sheep. And he was learning a lesson in the wilderness that God was teaching him. And the invisible hand of God was guiding his life, unknown to him. He thought that he was leading the sheep belonging to his father-in-law, but really God was leading him. He was God's sheep, and God was leading him. And then in chapter 3, you can read about where the burdening bush, he was, he was tending the sheep of his father-in-law, it says, and God spoke to him out of the bush. And God called him. And when God called him, Moses says, his words were, here I am, Lord. Those were his words. Here I am, Lord. Ready to go. And God said, Moses, I have heard the cry of my people in Egypt, and I am sending you. God, the invisible hand of God, was at work in this man's life. And he was going to use Moses to bring his people out of Egypt. What a wonderful God. Like you might think, how can God use me? I've done this and I've done that and I've done the other thing and I've messed up here and I've been broken here and I've done this wrong and that wrong and the other thing wrong. God uses nobodies. He used Moses. Moses was a wanted man back in Egypt. Who led him? Who protected him? God was with him. And if you read down there, and the, there's one verse there in, in chapter 3 and it says, he says to Moses, God says, I will go with you. The promise of God again fulfilled in Moses' life as he went with him. You can read about David and Goliath. And we all again know the story of David and Goliath. How David was minding the sheep, his father's sheep on the mountain. And how many times a bear came and a lion came to steal the sheep. And how Moses with his bare hands, killed the bear and killed the, the lions. And David knew that it was from God this strength came to kill the bear and kill the lion. There are things that come against us. There are things that, that we, we, we walk into every day. There are problems. And we have the power of God within us to stand and to say, God is with me. Do we say that? Or do we, like Moses, run ahead of God and, and try and solve the problem ourselves? Saul knew that the armor that he had was useless against Goliath. Goliath knew that the armor that David had and Saul had was useless against him. But David knew that there was an unseen and invisible hand of God that was going to bring down Goliath. He had faith, and we've had that too this morning. Brother Willem spoke about it. Faith, having faith. And Kathleen spoke about trusting the Lord. Right now, she said, the prayer was right now, what God is speaking to you, come and receive it. And I believe that right is, as God is saying to you this morning, Whatever you're going through, I am with you. That God wants you to take hold of that and to receive it. That was the prayer that came. And I believe that it came from God. Because the whole message was tied together in the worship, in the breaking of bread, in the prayer that came, in the opening. Everything was tied together because I believe God wants you to recognize one thing, and one thing only, and if this is the only thing you learn today, that God is with you in whatever you're going through. Whatever you're going to go through, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year. And don't be worried, can God use me? We look at the book of Esther, it's the only book in the Bible that God isn't mentioned. And yet, in all of it, we can see God at work behind the scenes. Esther, a young woman, brought, captured, brought to the palace of the king. 
and an evil Haman planning to destroy the Jews and destroy her uncle. And God in his workings and everything that he did, he brought it to be known to Mordecai who told Esther. And Esther sought the Lord. And you can see the heart of Esther. She sought the Lord. And Mordecai waited for God's timing. And Esther, this young woman, waited until the right time to go before the king. What a message for us in that. To wait for God. Don't rush ahead like Moses did. Don't take it upon yourself. Wait for God. And know that he is always with you. I'm going to close now, but before I do, I want to read two verses of a song that was written by Bill Gaither. And this is what it says. And, and the, the heading of the song is The Unseen Hand. There is an unseen hand to me that leads through ways I cannot see. While going through this world of woe, this hand still leads me as I go. I'm trusting to the unseen hand that guides me through this weary land. And some sweet day I'll reach that strand still guided by the unseen hand. The invisible hand of God is leading your life. You may not think it. You may doubt it. You may worry about it. But I want to tell you, God wants you to know today that he is with you. Second Chronicles 20.15 tells us the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours. God will fight your battles. All you've got to realize, he is with me. He is with me. The invisible hand of God is with us. Amen.